I will uh, quickly uh, touch upon um, the challenges with medical uh, device and equipment companies face today. Uh, this is based on our interaction with our customers. Um, I think some of these challenges are very unique to medical equipment and device companies. Uh, one of the things we see is, uh, in, especially in the US, uh, there is a lot of focus about reducing the cost of healthcare. And if you look at um, the cost, uh, you would see that uh, the cost increase in medical equipment has essentially been very modest over a period of last 10 years. So there's a lot of pressure on cost. At the same time, the cost of bringing new product to market, you know, has been high. And, you know, it's, we expect that it's going to continue to grow. So containing the cost and cost optimization, I think, is, an, is, a, is, a, is a challenge for the medical equipment industry. Uh, the other trend which we see is that in order for companies to gain market share and revenue, they have to constantly come up with new innovative products. Um, and I think that's, um, and, and also the pace of the technology changes is relatively higher. So if a company has, uh, you know, a very focused um, or limited set of products, uh, the chances of uh, suffering technology obsolescence is very high. So th that gain is, uh, is a key challenge. And then what we're seeing is that there is intense competition. Um, if you look at um, U.S. market, you would see there are a lot of multinational companies who are trying to come in. And there's and if you look at the uh, the imports, you would see almost 35 to 40 percent imports, which is happening today. So there is intense competition, and there is need for constantly constant innovation, and there is cost pressure. So the challenges, um, you know, are pretty intense. Now, of course, the market is very regulated. Um, there is strong FDA and, and compliance pressure on most of the companies. Rahul, next slide, please. And so in our conversation with these companies, uh, you know, we're trying to figure out, okay, if you have these challenges, what are you trying to do? Uh, what we have seen is, and we have categorized this um, broadly in three buckets. One is in order to increase the revenue, they themselves are reaching out to emerging geographies. Um, so they are trying, they are, they are uh, tailoring the products so that, you know, they can um, be positioned in emerging geographies and they're creating global platforms so that that can increase, uh, you know, the part we use and uh, reduce the complexity of the product. Uh, the second one, as I mentioned before, is uh, there's a lot of focus uh, in innovation and also they're looking at adjacent areas where they can have new revenue streams. And, and I think one of the most important factors is the focus on uh, the profit margin and cost optimization. And uh, this is one of the areas where I think the discussion today on DFM Pro uh, is essentially going to bring out how geometric DFM Pro can contribute in realizing some of these goals. Um, within cost optimization, we have seen that you know there are three main um, focal points. One is how we can improve the design process productivity. And as uh, some of you who have been associated in this field would have seen that it's a pretty iterative process. And uh, the focus is how can we make it, uh, you know, more efficient and more productive. Um, the second point is increasingly we have seen that uh, the design development and engineering does not happen um, at one location. Most of the companies have offices um, at different global lo locations and they collaborate with each other. Uh, you know, having um, access to a common uh, knowledge database from manufacturing guidelines um, and other design guidelines is important. So that's again is a core focus so that the collaboration is efficient and everybody um, is using the same standards and have access to same guidelines. Um, and like I mentioned before, this is an industry which is heavily regulated and, um, and there is a cost of quality um, and which cannot be compromised. but uh, the focus is that, uh, okay, we have to uh, meet regulatory compliance. We need uh, a very high quality standard, but how can we do it more efficiently? How can we contain these costs? So we see that these are some of the focus areas for, for the medical equipment companies today. Um, Rahul, please move on to the next slide. Right. So uh, what I covered in the previous slide was a quick introduction about Geometric, who we are. Uh, talked about our view, um, especially on the medical equipment companies, uh, what challenges they are, they are facing and what kind of strategies they are thinking about implementing. Uh, moving 
forward from this slide, uh, my colleague Rahul is going to take over and he's going to get very specific. Uh, he's going to talk about um, the specific challenges which are associated uh, from design to the production phase and design, uh, design for manufacturability. And also talk about features of DFM Pro and run us through a quick uh, DFM Pro uh, demo. So Rahul, uh, please take it over. Thanks, Vivek. Okay, so uh, what this slide talks about is the kind of challenges and traditional methods which are followed in the design to production cycle. The graphs shown on the right exhibit uh, the cost of a design change as we move downstream. So we can see with this exponential curve that as we move downstream from the design stage to the manufacturing shop flow, the cost of every introduced design change has high implications. It's going to have a high impact on cost. This typically happens because the kind of ready access to manufacturing rules and best practices which would be needed during the design stage may not be available. This can lead to increased number of change requests, significant wastage of material, and lower production yields. Similarly, when you have globally dispersed teams, which is the case with many large organizations, these distributed teams require access and adherence to common manufacturing and design guidelines. Now, we need a tool wherein you can build such best practices, guidelines, and distribute them across these teams such that everyone is referring to the same set of guidelines and best practices. The traditional design to manufacturing cycle exhibits this kind of workflow where you have the designs getting created, then they move downstream into prototype manufacturing assembly. Now for each of these downstream operations, you could have certain change requests which originate because of various reasons. Certain design is not easy for manufacturing, it needs a new tool. We don't have this tool in the shop floor. Uh, it's going to cause manufacturing problems. It's not easy to assemble and so on. So each of these change requests will lead to a design change. So the design moves back into the design department. There's a design modification which needs to be done. And as a result, the complete design to assembly cycle is lengthened. So you have delayed schedules, the time to market is higher. Now how can we avoid this? This is where DFM or design for manufacturing actually came about. Traditionally DFM originated as a series of checklists, guidelines, handbooks. Organizations started practicing DFM reviews uh, by collaborating between various departments designers were trained periodically on the manufacturing best practices. The designs were reviewed manually by the designer himself by referring to those guidelines or by peers and seniors in the organization. There was frequent consultation with manufacturing experts to ensure that the design was easy to manufacture. However, the traditional method of performing DFM reviews has certain problems. Manual reviews are definitely time consuming. If you have a large part or assembly, Ensuring that you refer to each and every check item is not possible. This can lead to inconsistent design quality. You need proximity between design and manufacturing to ensure that the reviews are properly conducted and you have the collaboration between the right people at the right time. To address these problems, Geometric has come up with this product called DFM Pro. The main intent of this product is to facilitate upstream manufacturability validation. That is, identify those areas of a design which are difficult, expensive, or impossible to manufacture. So what it does is, it automates the iterative design review process. So typically, you would go through a design manually, refer to those best practices guidelines. DFM Pro can automate those checks to a large extent and ensure that the design is easy to manufacture. In addition to the standard rules which Pro are shipped with along, with, along with DFM Pro, it also has a framework using which you can capture and reuse the manufacturing knowledge within the organization. So the earlier design to manufacturing cycle which we saw gets transformed in this fashion. 
where you have DFM Pro integrated within the design environment right on the designer's desktop and you bring your best practices from the downstream departments and integrate them within DFM Pro. As a result, the design can be validated as per the best practices and guidelines within the design environment. So the iterations are now happening on the designer's desktop. This leads to a shorter time required for design changes. There may be some change requests which may still originate because of functional requirements or some checks which are very specific in nature, but the total time required for the design to manufacturing cycle is reduced to a large extent. DF Improve benefits at many levels. For design engineers, it offers a quick and interactive feedback while designing. It offers a access to the organization's knowledge base. For new engineers, it offers a tool using which you can quickly train for the best practices of the organization. For manufacturing engineers, it is a framework using which you can use it as a filter for any jobs which you may receive. It saves downstream time and rework. You can treat DFM Pro as a kind of gate which will check for the adherence of your designs to the manufacturing recommendations. For the organization as a whole, it offers a framework using which you can capture and reuse the manufacturing knowledge within the organization. It will reduce your time to market by reducing the kind of iterations which will typically happen between design and manufacturing and thus you can design anywhere and manufacture anywhere. This slide now shows a sample of the out-of-the-box rules which ship with DFM Pro. As you can see, we cover various modules based on your manufacturing requirements. There are certain machining rules, plastic-related rules, sheet metal rules, assembly rules, casting rules. In addition to the standard rules, we also provide support for customization. That means that in addition to the standard rules, you can also add your own rules using simple visual basic programming or advanced rules using C++. The main advantage is that you can retain the confidentiality of the rules within the organization, especially in scenarios where the IP is very important. You cannot reveal them outside the organization. For the end user, there is no distinction as such they get the same kind of interactive feedback within the CAD environment. The same kind of XML and 3D reports can be generated. And the whole user experience remains similar for both standard as well as custom rules. Within the PLM workflow, DFM Pro integrates at two locations. For the design engineer, the usage is more interactive, wherein within the CAD environment, he will iterate on the design For the manufacturing engineer or the quality engineer, the usage is more of a non-interactive one. So we have a batch mode which the engineer can use to check designs which are received by running them offline using the batch mode of DFM Pro, generating reports which can then be circulated within the organization or shared with external vendors as required. DFM Pro supports a multi-CAD environment. Uh, we have tight integrations with CAD systems like ProE or SolidWorks. We also have a standalone version which can handle other CAD environments. And for applications 